Hello everyone and welcome to Uma Ruby Tarot on this Libra full moon. Now there is so much hectic energy going on in the stratosphere right now that I thought I'd give you a quick rundown, not too much to bore you, but uh, we have Jupiter and Neptune in a direct conjunction in Pisces, which hasn't happened since the 1800s. So if you're feeling kind of like woozy in dreamland and things are really cropping up for you in the unconscious brain, then that's completely normal and fine. There might be some messages in there for you. It might be a good time to like dream journal or like harnessing on what's going on in the unknown, the unseen. Also this full moon in Libra is the final full moon that we have any say in before eclipse season. So in two weeks it's going to be the new moon in Taurus and then two weeks following that will be the full moon in Scorpio which will be a total lunar eclipse which is very exciting and eclipses can often bring big change that we kind of have to just go with and really learn from as best we can. Now to celebrate Libra I have got four versions of the Justice card here for you. So in Tarot, in the Major Arcana, number 11 is Justice. It's that moment of review after all we've learnt so far and kind of thinking about what is fair and what is right and what that means to us on the inside and how is that projected on the outside. Uh, so what I'll do is show you each. So if you want to, this is pile one and I have Justice there and also this little Aurora Borealis sparkly earring. Is that glinting? Oh yes, lovely. That's pile one. Pile two is Betty White, Rose Nyland. I'll put that there actually. And this little tiny opal stud. Hope you can see that. Pile three is the Wheel of the Year Tarot and this beautiful cosmic cartoon of justice and this cross earring. And finally, pile four is the Murder of Crows Tarot. There's justice and this beautiful silver hoop earring that I've stepped on, so it's squashed on one side. Still good. Still wearable, still wear them quite often. Sometimes you just step on a hoop. Okay, so there's pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four. Have a think about the images in the cards, the colors, have a think about the jewelry that I showed you, not too much. Remember with picker cards, it's always great just to really go on impulse, go on the one that you just want to roll with, that's the best way. But I am going to invite you over now into the meditation section of the reading and you can have a little quick one minute with me and that might give you some greater clarity. So I'll see you over there. Oh, before I go actually, head over to umaruby.com. I've got your horoscopes up for this lunation. So every two weeks I update the horoscope section. So that's a bit more in depth about the planetary aspects of the up, up, up in the sky. Uh, they're yeah, a great read and they're all for you from my heart to yours. All the very best and I'll see you in your reading. Mm -hmm, exciting. And welcome to the meditation section of your reading. Now what I want you to do is, as I said before, just really relax into this process. It is not a test. You don't have to try and pick the right one. Just pick the one that you remember, the one that was sort of making you laugh or making you smile or whatever it was and that will be the reading that is meant for you. If you pick one and it's all gibberish then just pick another one. That's great. It's free tarot on the internet. Celebrate the moon. It's witchcraft. <laughs> all right so breathe with me. One two And three. Pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four. Get it, girl. Love you heaps. 
Hello, pile one. If you pick the Hermetic Tarot and this little AB crystal earring, which I can show you here, a little bit up close. Very sparkly. Oh, lovely. Look how it catches the light. Then, welcome to your reading. Now, I'm going to dive in because I think that there's there's a lot to be said this time around. As I was saying before, this is our last full moon before eclipse season. So we've got to, I guess, expunge as much as we can uh, between now and then. Uh, now, as I was saying, Pluto is in a very tight T-square with the moon and the sun. So the sun's in Aries still, the moon's in Libra, and Pluto is in Capricorn. So we've got a cardinal T-square, which is some kind of not, it's not desperate energy, but it definitely is direct energy. It's like, right, okay, what do we need to change here? What, how can we get off on the right foot? We need to move on right now. Uh, it's intense stuff and obviously coupled with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that's all happening over in Pisces, that sort of uh, beautiful, uh, like, psychedelic kind of vibe that's happening there, uh, there's going to be a lot of sort of big changes that are about to happen and we'll probably recognise that in our lives in certain different ways as a group. Individually, it is going to happen too. So to commemorate the sort of like trifecta of energies that we're dealing with this moon, rather than just the two, I'm going to pull three oracle cards and then sew them together. And that will give me a sense and you a sense if you're in the right pile. So the story that I tell with the oracles will be your clarifier as to if I'm in the right place or not. And then I'm going to pull tarot cards and I'm just going to be really sort of free flowing with it this time around. I'm going to keep justice here just so we can see, but I am going to, yeah, just be a little more, yeah, free flowing with the energy here. I'm not going, I'm going to, obviously your pile ones, so this is the first one that I'm filming. Um, so we'll write the blueprint with you if that's okay. And then the rest of the piles will be able to have their day in the sun based on what we discover with you. All right, so there's the first oracle pile. I'm gonna shuffle the second. Yeah, it's big, 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 long overdue shifts are happening now for everybody. Ooh. All right, so there's the second oracle pile and finally number three. So if we look at this, yeah, in terms of very loosely, but if we look Pluto, the moon, the sun, we will see what comes out here. And then I can talk some more with tarot. Shuffle. Okay. So. Yeah, great. Now, uh, this doesn't have to be, obviously, but I potentially might be. Them. <laughs> check your chart and look at your Aries energy because I definitely know for a lot of Aries, people with lots of Aries in their chart ATM, uh, their 12th house is being really activated by Jupiter and Pisces. So they're that kind of expansion of the mind and, and, and uh, like bizarrely accurate dream language is something that's going on here. Now you don't have to be an Aries sun or an Aries rising or anything like that, but this is what I'm getting from here because it says we've got the waxing crescent moon card, which is have faith in your dreams. And then we have universal love in the sacred geometry. And then we have gateway from Denise Lynn. So this is really talking about some kind of mind expansion, some kind of 
great secret that has been discovered in dreams. So I'm not sure if you've been really overly active in dreamland at the moment, if there's been some real messages that have been coming through for you. Uh, I'm going to assume that there has been. Um, one thing to really kind of ground yourself through all of this change and stuff like that is to have a little more faith in dreamland i know sometimes i've had sleep paralysis in my time it's been really spooky i uh, i used to suffer terrible nightmares on and off throughout throughout time and, and would sometimes be frightened to go to sleep uh you must remember that in the, that liminal world in that dream space in that kind of when the pineal gland is activating as you're asleep uh, you're in control you're in absolute control everything that happens in here is coming from you or through you and it's not going to harm you so potentially there may have been some sort of recurring kind of uh, images or you know I know some people dream of snakes I know some people dream of their teeth falling out I know there's a whole bunch of classic horror stories in dreamland it doesn't have to be that kind of um uh dramatic as well it can be it can be maybe just you know the same characters that are appearing in your dreams but whatever it is i think that you're being encouraged to learn what's going on in that dream space and to bring it out here into the 3d into this land there's a lot to be there's a lot of there's a lot to be deciphered in dreamland and it's interesting you know why would the brain be so active and full of colors and lights and sound what is trying to get through you know there's a whole there's an answer there's a question an answer for all of that the universal love card is a really hopeful one that's i mean i'll show i'll hold that up to you actually why i describe it that that's you know, the concept of universal love it sounds trite but it's really all we can hang on to in terms of depending on what you believe about consciousness and depending on what you believe about how we are all connected as individuals and where we've come from and you know what the, why the planets have such an effect on us universal love is the state of bliss that a lot of separate religions are all trying to attain and trying to get to i've learned a lot from the theosophical society lately and just kind of cross referencing all sorts of different belief traditions and cultural traditions and things like that and ultimately that nirvana space is universal love that 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 kind of you know it's kind of sometimes described as heaven you know that we only get to after we die it's got a lot of different definitions so i think probably what this is kind of telling me is that you've been overactive in dreamland hugely so there's problems that you're trying to solve so it's like you know let me sleep on it is kind of the in, the intent that i'm getting here that you've been trying to sleep on it for a, a long time uh and yet you're being encouraged to fossic deeper i don't know if you've attempted to control your dreams when you're in that space uh it's a it's a skill that everyone has as far as i'm aware it's just a matter of kind of um strengthening the muscle but what i would probably suggest with you before we go anywhere else is keep a little book by your bed keep a dream journal i know you've probably been told a million times but i could tell you what like it's really good advice uh i'm gonna keep these here actually because then when you read back at it because dreams often kind of you, they escape you as the day goes on i know that i found that for a long time it's like i don't know i'll remember and then it's like you just actually can't remember what happened uh and then it, it you know these messages slip back into the unconscious rather than or the subconscious rather than the the conscious and yeah the brain is urging you with these with these messages so let me pull some tarot and I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to put justice back in. 
because while one thing that I do know about the Justice card is that it's kind of not up to us. But let me see what comes out here. Mind, body, spirit. Hmm. Do one, two, three, four. Holy moly. Okay, so I've got the Devil, the Two of Cups, Death, and the Five of Cups. Death and the Devil are both not to be frightened of. They're both not to be feared when they come out in a tarot spread. That's one thing that I'll start this reading off with. The devil is in us. It's our own relationship with our habits, with our, with our uh, repetition. And death often denotes a rebirth. So death is very Plutonian. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a Scorpio, classically Scorpio card. You can see there, there's the little glyph for Scorpio. And there's a scorpion there. Uh, yeah, and in the Hermetic it's called the Child of the Great Transformers. So there is a strong story here about being not addicted to someone, but possibly. I'm going to flip these cards over as well so we can read the backs. That's what I've decided to do. Yeah, so I've, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to my process. Uh, but... So the Two of Cups is that communion between one, one soul and the other. It's Venus and Cancer, so it is a lot about emotional, the emotional body, emotional love. It's the Lord of Love in the Hermetic Tarot. Uh, and there was an ending with this individual, with this person that you were attached to so deeply. And now you possibly are having dreams about them. If we look at the have faith in your dreams, gateway, universal love, oracles, because that's the five of cups comes after death. So child of the traits of great, great transformers, the death card, I would say that there was an ending to this coupling. And this doesn't have to be somebody that you were with physically. This could be the idea of someone, or this could be, uh, So I'm just getting my head around the gravity of this one because it is, it is rich. It's heavy. The Five of Cups talks to me, Scorpio again. Wow, we do have got some Capricorn energy and some Scorp energy here, yeah. The dreams might be hard for you. They might be difficult for you. This, this soul might be entering your space again and again, and it might be something that you're unprepared for or that you'd like to stop because there was the ending. This could go no further. This Two of Cups coupling had to be over. There's stuff about attachment styles here. <laughs> there really is. I, that if we look at the devil and the two of cups, that to me describes a coupling that either literally you were dealing with addictions together or separately, or there was a codependency sort of happening in this, this two of cups scenario. I'm going to flip them over straight away, actually, because I just need to see... I'll leave that there, but I'll flip that there. I'll leave that there, but I'll flip that there. I'll leave that there, but I'll flip that there. I'll leave that there, but I'll flip that there. Wow, okay.
you had to, you had to go. I have the, the last judgment, the wheel of fortune, the ace of cups, and the king of cups. So one thing that you really do need to do, and it might be helpful in dreamland if this happens again, that this, this energy is infiltrating your dream space, you can say goodbye to them. See how that goes. If you approach, if they are in, the, if you find yourself in this space with them again, say goodbye to them because you have the Ace of Cups underneath death. So this is a brand new beginning in love. This is a, a really fruitful, bountiful space. This is a, a gift from the hand of spirit. I don't ever want you to think that you're not going to be able to be in love again or share what you shared with this, this energy here, this past energy. The Wheel of Fortune underneath the Two of Cups is the beginning of a new cycle. It is, it's kind of, does denote another ending. <clears throat> the Last Judgment is about, it asks the question, are you going to live a life half lived? And that's coming underneath the devil. So what this does, is telling me is that this twosome was unhealthy for, it was limiting, maybe not unhealthy. That's not for me to say, but it was limiting. There was definitely an expansion that you were, that you are going through perhaps that you're looking for that can't, could not happen in this environment. Underneath the Five of Cups, we have the King of Cups, which represents to me maybe an external energy from your own. This could be somebody who is emotionally intelligent and, um, and emotionally giving and stable and willing to match you in conversations about grief in conversations about attachment styles, in conversations about separating the feelings, the cups from the swords and really grounding you back into a sense of reality. There's a lot going on here in, in, the, in the dream state that I'd love for you to find some peace and to find some closure with. There's no shame in any of your difficulty in letting go that proves that you that you really did love them and I'm looking at universal love right now and I think that I can speak plainly when I say that they really love you as well and how beautiful that you got to spend this time together and how beautiful that as time goes on in a circle, not in a line. Remember, time isn't linear. Time is the wheel of fortune. How lovely that you got to spend some, spend some time together. And how wonderful that you've got things to look forward to, that you can step out from here and you can move forward. You are entitled to grieve. If that's what it is that you're feeling, you're absolutely so entitled to this grief. But understand that you've moved past the devil, which is a big step, a really big step in terms of repetitive thoughts, in terms of being beholden or, or trapped to an energy or a scenario or a, or a, or a pocket of I'm tongue-tied at the moment because this one's quite, quite powerful. 
So maybe at this at this full moon, if this is when you're watching this, ask of the moon to give you the strength to say goodbye and find that closure for yourself if that was something that you weren't given or you weren't left with if it was if this instance didn't allow for that closure get it for yourself and that's that's a beautiful thing to do at a libra full moon in a grander scale libra is about relationships it is about the mixing of two separate energies into a into a balance of of the same space and this is really really lovely i'm mindful of not saying too much i think that this is delicate and i'm not going to say that this king of cups energy is going to provide you with what couldn't be provided before because that's not why we couple with somebody this king of cups could actually represent your individuality and your emotional articulation and your skills to to process and to move on to move through move through is a better term i think than move on i'm going to leave this one here i think pile one i hope that i've left you with enough and i hope that i've left you with some skills to use when you are drawn back to before the transformation before the rebirth this is big stuff for you and i'm very proud of you and i think that this is going to be really lovely and i and i i have empathy for you that perhaps dreamland hasn't been the most relaxing place lately you have control in that space remember that and ask the moon ask the moon for guidance and helping you move from this ending to be available for that gift of the ace of cups uh all my love to you pile 1 full moon blessings on this libra full moon if you'd like a little bit of extra advice i do write horoscopes every 2 weeks on my website at umaruby.com you can pop over there and have a read other than that i wish you all the love and positivity and light and grace in the world you deserve it and you've done very well to get to this point super super proud of you goodbyes are very difficult but love wouldn't feel like anything if we couldn't feel the pain take care hello pile 2 if you pick the golden girls tarot with rose nyland as the figure of justice and this itsy bitsy little opal stud which I'll show you there if that's a twinkling then welcome to your reading. Now, as I was saying before, we've got some pretty intense energy happening, cropping up for us all at this full moon because we have obviously the sun and the moon in opposition, which is what happens every full moon. It's kind of normal. It's completely fine. It's also why it's such a great outlet emotionally for us all because the sun's sort of shining a light on the moon, our emotional body, and sort of saying, let's look at these things and let's move through that. Let's let that go. Uh, but as I was saying, we do have Pluto in the mix in Capricorn. So we've got the sun in Aries, the moon in Libra, Pluto in Capricorn, forming this really kind of sharp cardinal t-square that means that pluto's energy pluto is our great destroyer our great fire starter the hawaiians call pluto pele who is the goddess of the volcanoes um pluto pele is really affecting this full moon right now so you might notice that there is about that there's some big shifts happening right now there's some big uh if we weren't used to it by now <laughs> but huge big 
uh, movement going on in your life in some aspect and as a group too I think we'll probably be finding some new information coming to light and some uh, different punches that we'll have to roll with as time goes on uh, now so for this reading uh, I am going to pull three oracle cards um, just to give us a sense of who you are and what it is that you need from tarot and I'll put so I'll pull three of these and then I'll link them together and see if I've got a match and if I do great stay on if I don't that's really no problem you're welcome to pick another pile uh, and if there's nothing in this in the oracle reading that's uh, floating your boat then there might not be a message in here for you and that's fine that happens sometimes uh, but do uh, enjoy the full moon and all that she brings, all that she's willing to let go. Uh, another, you know, to add to add uh, more importance to the occasion, this is the last full moon before eclipse season, so in two weeks we're going to have the new moon in Taurus, but it will be a solar eclipse, which is kind of, I guess, semi-positive energy, like it's sort of, there is... Uh, if we think about our sort of manifestation body and what we what questions we ask of the moon and what we hope to be come true at a new moon uh, there'll be more sunshine on that the, f the full moon after that however in the Scorpio is going to be a lunar eclipse so we just have to like you know do whatever we need to lay down and take it so big changes uh, okay but let me I've got the everything shuffled here so I will pull Isn't that gorgeous? I'm just loving all of these double numbers I got. In pile two, I got card number 44. And now I have card number 22, which is the Divine Masculine Sacred Geometry card, which I'll give you a quick look at. With Have Faith in Your Dreams by... Gosh, that came out for the first pile too. <laughs> And then delight the cheeky little sparrows having such fun. Okay, now this Divine Masculine is an interesting card because it shouldn't exclude anyone. Uh, depending on what you believe, I tend to believe in terms of the divines, the divine feminine, the divine, divine masculine, those two sort of polarizing energies, we all contain those two. And they can work in beautiful harmony together, which is an interesting thing to come out at this, at this Libra full moon, because Libra is about balance. And 22 is a really balanced number. I would maybe suggest that there is something happening in your unconscious world that is really giving you a lot of pleasure at the moment. Uh, and it could be to do with what we were discussing about these sort of feminine, masculine energies and how to counterbalance one with the other and what is going to come out for you here is going to be really beneficial I think I encourage you to be active in dreamland I encourage you to try as much as you can to manipulate your presence in the dream it does take practice and I've only actually managed to do it well I used to do it all the time when I was little uh, and I just didn't think about it I thought that's what dreams were were sort of like video games when you are <laughs> but yeah as you get older you sort of put that fairy story nonsense out of your head and then pass off dreams as just you know an overactive imagination which is true but also not that light <laughs> um so there's something that you're dreaming about at the moment and it's really giving you a lot of simple pleasure so the sparrow card talks about it's called the delight card so it's about, I don't know if you've watched sparrows in a group but they're teeny tiny but not everyone 
was, is going to fuck with the sparrow because there's so many of them. They've kind of, they go about their day, they get their little nutrients where they need it, they have a little laugh, have a little bath, they're having a great time. The divine masculine with this is, I guess, in terms of trying to sort of separate those two energies and sort of understand them for their individual traits. Divine Masculine does talk about the sort of active, active energy. So it is sort of forthright in the tarot. I guess if you think about the emperor and the empress, I don't like to gender either of those cards. We can all be the empress and the emperor, but as far as what they represent, there's a difference between the two. The emperor would say would be the divine masculine who would be the one that is active, that is act activating the space, who is in control, not in a, I would never suggest that it was positive in a way of power. I, that we're getting away from that old life. Uh, but in terms of being forthright, in terms of being, confident and assured uh, I mean I'm saying all of this and it's sort of like well what you know what feminine energy doesn't hold all of these traits which kind of comes back to my point that we all have divine feminine divine masculine in us uh, I identify as a non-binary individual so my gender identity uh, I was n I never meshed up in either camp <laughs> simple as that but there is a great power in a, a, a branching off from polarity. And I'm not sure if what I'm saying is resonating with you at all, but let's move on to tarot, I think, and some more answers could be revealed. I'm going to put these oracles here. And we'll see what tarot has to say. So I will put Betty back in. I'm going to give these a nice big shuffle and I'm going to we'll let four cards come out and we'll paint a little picture with them and then I'm going to flip the piles and see what the back says it's just a new little reading style that, that I've invented just now but this is exciting though I mean it's really lovely to feel that so many, so many people's dream scapes have been so active uh, there's a lot to be said for the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction that I was rabbiting on about in the intro, but this has never happened in our lifetime and it won't happen again. So from the 12th of April, Southern Hemisphere, uh, or maybe it was the 13th in the early morning, the 12th of Northern Hemisphere, they're both in Pisces, so the modern and ancient ruler of Pisces are both there at the same degree in Pisces. The last time this happened was in the 18, 1856, I think, which was the dawning of the spiritualism movement. Um, ooh, okay, let's have a look. Eyes on the prize. Two of Swords, Ten of Pentacles, the Tower, and the Seven of Wands. Wow, we're really getting some big Pluto vibes in these readings uh there's something here that i can see quite clearly the ten of pentacles is the space in time when we have we can reap what we have sown and it's bound to fall and it's kind of i guess in terms of like material wealth or you know having having enough for everybody in your your family line and sort of providing for for one another and everything there's a big choice that has to be made here two of swords is two truths so it's kind of that stillness when there are options it's not two of one so it's not like right let's get to it this is like a moment of stillness, also a Libra card, which is very interesting, so perfect for this Libra spread, but it is that moment of stillness. And you can see behind Dorothy, the shores are lapping up there, so I would maybe anticipate that it's something emotional that perhaps needs to be decided upon, but also uh, you're standing on dry land at the moment, you're actually separating your emotions from your mental space, so you can make the decision it is to do with i guess ten of pentacles is like the family card 
so maybe in, 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 in that way of family, there is a big shift and a big change that's about to happen. The tower is a really direct uh, moment where what was in existence was unstable and so the hand of spirit intervenes. You can see that in the Golden Girls Tarot it's Shady Pines that's on fire. Now we're not saying that Sophia set it on fire but you know that was the running joke in this show. And here she is, the Seven of Wands, defending herself. So perhaps this could be you. Uh, perhaps maybe you're Sophia and you're the one that has instigated this change, this sharp change in your in, in in your close environment, in your family family area. Uh, I would suggest that to have yeah have faith in your dreams and the delight. There was some probably there's some friction, and this divine masculine might be representative of something that is was standing in the way of you making further progress with something that you were really believing in and you've had to put your foot down and, and stake claim. So resist against any sort of oppression and find the divine masculine in yourself. Find that direct sort of uh, feet on the ground. So solidity, solidity, is that a word? You know, a power to say, no, this is my decision to make. Uh, and I'm being guided and I'm going to make the decision on this. I like to see you as Sophia in, in this reading. Bless you. Uh, and it was you. You were the one that has caused this tower moment, caused this sort of destruction of what, what once existed that can't any longer. And it's coming from a place of wanting to strive for happiness you know, which is, which is really lovely. Uh, I'm going to flip over now our reading. I keep directed here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sophia's cropping up again. Oh, this is gorge. This is really nice. I wonder if you can see everything there. Yeah. <clears throat> Lots of pentacles here, which is earth energy, which is body energy. It's material, it's sort of Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo energy. So it's kind of like, for want of a better word, like sort of practical, grounded, achievable, attainable, less sort of emotionally driven or less spiritually driven. But it's really about the here and now. It's about sort of, and then yet to have the Ten of Pentacles about legacy in a way it's about your material legacy but material or otherwise like a, but you know like something that we can touch and feel and smell and taste here uh you're going to find the three of pentacles has come up here underneath the two of swords so this could be uh resonant for you just in terms of maybe in an alternative way of uh building together in that, in that familial sense. Um, this, the Three of Pentacles talks about teamwork and collaboration, so it could be, you know, I think that's one thing that a lot of young parents have on their mind at the moment is that idea of, as we move through all of this, everything that's happening at the moment, everything that's, you know, life has changed forevermore, how are we going to raise a family? How are we going to, you know, what world are we bringing our children into? And this card is sort of telling me that, yeah, it's there's that idea of uh, co-creation, of collaboration is on your mind. Uh, the Seven of Pentacles has come in underneath the Ten of Pentacles, so that's telling me that, you know, you're going to sow these seeds and you're going to, there's going to be time to wait for them to, to um, take root. But it might be a few steps back from wherever it was you were feeling in this Ten of Pentacles vibe maybe, and you've had to go back. Uh, to the seven, but with diligence and with with hard work, as you're known to do, then that's going to come out for you again. That's going to start growing. The two of wands. So here's Sophia. Here's your energy, little fire starter. <laughs> In the two of wands, Sophia's come out underneath shady pines. 
the tower. So this is definitely you. Having to, you've defended yourself in the Seven of Wands, but now you're in the Two of Wands, which is that moment of map drawing, that moment of like, okay, we can go this way or we're going to go this way. How are we going to make this work for us? And then underneath the Seven of Wands, you've got the Six of Pentacles. Blanche Devereaux again, Earthbound Energy. Uh, this is a beautiful card of having enough to share around. So maybe it won't be as grand as the Ten of Pentacles that you had in your mind before, uh, but you're going to stick to your guns and you're going to stick to your heart space. You're not going to be uh, led by anybody's masculine energy. You're going to use your divine masculine energy that you have, irregardless of gender. It's got nothing to do with that. This is about your sense of, you can see here, one, two, three, four, that's a very emperor image right there, the foundations, the sort of like four pillars of, and 22 is, you know, that's breaks down to a four as well. So that sort of cemented, uh, opposite to the tower. The tower was built on shaky foundations. This is you're moving through with a stable foundation. And yeah, I'm just going to show you that one again just because it's so beautiful. And there is something that maybe if, and it doesn't have to be, I don't want to bring star signs into this because it does tend to put people off. One thing I will remind you is we have every single sign in our birth chart. It's just a matter of where. Potentially, you, this spread could mean that you have a lot of earth energy in your chart. It could also just mean that these are the things that you're thinking about right now, that these are the big questions, these are the places in life that you've had to defend yourself, perhaps, or defend your, defend your position. Uh, but, yeah, this is really a clear, clean-cut, direct message to say that you are the master of your own destiny and you know what's right for your loved ones and for your legacy and for how you want to be remembered and how you want to provide and who you want to do that with uh, and go forth, do it, you cheeky devil for, <laughs> for setting a match to it, shady pines, but you know what, sometimes things got to go, got to move through for the new. Uh, that, I'm going to leave this reading here, I think this is really cute, this is really lovely nice and fresh. I'm trying to keep these as sort of concise as I can lately. Uh, but that's all I've got for you, pile two. Uh, please enjoy the Libra full moon. It's going to be a big one. Batten down the hatches, hold on, let Luna have it. You know, she can take it. She's wanting to give, she's wanting you to give it back to her, whatever it is you need to let go. Uh, and make the most of it because as I said, next lunar cycle we've got coming up is eclipse season. So we all just have to like lay down and take it <laughs> for want of a better expression um head over to umaruby.com if you wanted to read your horoscope i've got i update that every two weeks with some new information for you based on the planetary alignments um other than that i am going to leave you here full moon blessings love you heaps and i'll speak to you later bye hello pile three if you pick the wheel of the year tarot and this little cross, take this cross. Can you see this cross? Take this cross. <laughs> then welcome to your reading. I'm gonna show you the card up a little closer as well because this deck is just a little smaller than the other ones and I'm not sure if it's being picked up in the same way. But there's justice right there in the wheel of the year. I'm going to set these aside just for the moment. Uh, now, we'll dive right into it. As I said before, we've got some really intense energies coming our way this full moon. So we've got the sun, we've got the moon. We've also got Pluto involved in this energetic force field. So their three have, have formed an exact T-square, which means that there's one planet here and one planet here. So sun, moon, and that's normal for a full moon, sort of reflecting against one another, kind of polarizing, but it's also the sun sort of like beaming to the moon, being like, what do you need to let, let go of? What emotional things can we shift for you, Bill? Positive, but up here we have Pluto, 
which is our great destructor. It's the planet, the karmic taskmaster, the shaman. It's the one that flips the table up on everyone. So there, we anticipate that there is going to be some of that energy flying about the place come the full moon, uh, and that was going. That's going to be felt for you know weeks, you know after, potentially longer. It depends on yeah. Like it's it's quite a interesting formation. Uh, but another thing to think about is that this is the last full moon before eclipse season as well. So there is really a it, the time is now to let go of what you need to let go of. Really, really let it go. Libra is obviously the mediator. You know, it's that lovely energy of to and fro, of right and wrong, and not even right and wrong so much as just balance in 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 fair. Fairness is a really good word for Libra. Uh, so there's no use in slipping away into. Um, delusion which is something that can happen as well because Jupiter is in an exact conjunction with Neptune in Pisces so possibly dreamland is like spinning you out at the moment you might be feeling really great you might be feeling really unstable unhinged uh, that's really natural and fine and I suggest that you go with it but to prepare us for the potential of an uncovering or an un unraveling or a big reveal. Let's pull some oracle cards. So I've shuffled those three piles. So I'm going to flip a card from each of these piles and then marry them together to, ah, wow. Okay, I got here, I'm gonna show you. A lot of the same cards are coming out no matter how I shuffle them, which is beautiful. You know, it's obviously, there's a nice um, reason for these cards coming out. This beautiful sparrow here uh, wants to tell you that there's sort of like safety and simplicity in numbers. So if you think about sparrows and the way that they move around and eat and everything, not many people will fuck around with a sparrow or not many birds rather, <laughs> or predators, because there's so many of them sometimes, it can be a bit uh, daunting. Uh, we've got the fixed moon card, which says hold your vision. So that idea of fixed energy in terms of star signs, the fixed star signs are Leo and Taurus and Scorpio and Aquarius. I'm reluctant to bring in star signs too much into these readings because that does tend to put people off they're sort of like oh no i'm not a leo i'm not a whatever one thing to remember is that we've got every single star sign in our chart it's just a matter of where we are more connected than you think in that way of kind of you know we, we, the painting our self-portrait is completely individual and completely the individual strokes and there's no two the same they're all using the same colors though if that makes any sense. Your last card is the third eye chakra, which is very interesting uh, because I was talking a lot about the pineal gland in the other readings. Um, the pineal gland, which is that little globule in the center of the brain, uh, some people think is the third eye. So it's kind of in, in a lot of different ancient traditions and things like that. I think the eye of Ra is actually hauntingly looks like a cross section of the brain with the pupil as the, the pineal gland, which is in the center. Uh, so obviously intuition is a big theme for this one. I think that maybe there's something that you're attempting to get off the ground or attempting to move forward and it's maybe come to you in some sort of vision. I mean, that sounds a bit um, trippy taco, but it could be something, you know, Every if you think about it, every single thing that is created does come from a harebrained scheme so it's not it's not that weird uh but you may have hit a couple of roadblocks possibly uh and so you're being told to hold your vision to really harness that fixed energy that that energy of not willing to uh not, not willing to let it go so sort of staying in it for the long haul if you think about those star signs that i just rattled off you'll notice that they do have that kind of stable sort of energy about them there is something that 
uh, they're not easily swayed. They're, they're not um, about to be sort of taken off in a different direction. Obviously, this is for, you know, something lovely and beautiful and happy because you've got the sparrows there. So maybe it's sort of a, there's a sense of like birds of a feather flocking together here, I think. Uh, and yeah, really drop into your intuitive body when piecing together your flock, I guess, because uh, you need to be of the similar temperament to make it work. And you're kind of in it maybe for the long haul too, I would suggest. Um, if what I've said is ring your bells, stay with me. If not, that's fine. Pick another pile, perhaps. Uh, but let's see what Tara can tell us about this rather, not vague, but it's sort of, it's not as direct as the other piles, which is so fine. I'll set the earring in there and I'll put Justice back in. But let's see what Tarot says. And this deck is was given to me by this beautiful witch that I bought some other things off. And she just threw it in as a bonus. And I really love it. It's like a sort of like pocket size uh, travel tarot. <laughs> but let's have a look. One more shuffle. So what can you tell us? about pile three spirit what is the what is this project or adventure that they're about to embark on it's something that I don't think is potentially so out of the blue I think this possibly could be something that you've been working on for some time but what is it and what's going on and how can we at this Lunation, or at this moment in time, whenever you're watching this video, how can we move forward with, with that? Oh, two of cups. The nine of swords. The princess of swords. And the eight of swords. Oh, wow, okay. Okay, there's the two of cups there. The nine of swords. Princess of Swords and the Eight of Swords. Okay, so maybe the reason that I'm changing, I'm not changing tack, but it's sort of there is something you thought that this was a divine coupling. You thought that you were going to be in this person's energy for a really long time and that there was sort of something sacred about it. Uh, which there was for a time, but you have found yourself in a state of mental anguish. You're up at night and you're being really tormented by your thoughts at the moment. And there's possibly maybe some sort of juvenile truth teller that's in the atmosphere that has maybe said some cutting things and this could be this two of cups energy that could be you and somebody else. It could also maybe not be, I mean, it could be something, we'll see what the other side of the deck say. It could be, I don't know, like the con like sort of bringing folks together. That could be something that's, that's, uh, that's here, but you've got the eight of swords, which, this princess has made you feel a bit trapped. This princess has, with their truth, from their perspective, what they've said to be true, you know? I say juvenile, but the princess is sort of that energy of kind of, in other decks, it's the page. So it's sort of, it is the, like the, the youthful sort of energy, maybe wet behind the ears, maybe not so skilled with tact. That could be something that's going on here. Uh, but you seem to be in quite a lot of sort of mental strife about this. There's a lot going on here in your brain. Uh, I am going to save these and flip that just to see what's going on under here. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Two of Wands, Five of Wands, the Devil, and the Knight of Wands. Wow, okay. Okay, so there's a lot of wands energy on the wands and wands and swords. So this is there's a battle here between your mind and your spirit, your sort of uh, optimistic uh, doer. That kind of the ones talk about our like innate talents and our kind of like the sort of the mastery and mystery of the creative body. I don't know if you're an artist, I don't know if that's something that you sort of spend a lot of time focusing on, but this is really great to qualify all of this kind of hardcore swords energy and this sort of really uh, difficult, after what after something that something that looked like it was going to work out in a really beautiful uh, flow, uh, has not been able to. So underneath, is the two of wands so now I guess you're in like the moment of you're deciding which way to go to next it's sort of like okay well this didn't work out and it was kind of maybe a little bit intense just because of all of this swords energy here uh, the devil's here which is really interesting underneath the princess of swords so uh, I can see there that's um, quite an intense energy so Perhaps you are, yeah, you're needing, you're, you're, you're better off. You're better off with the decisions that you've made and the sort of self-preservation that you're having to instill right now. Your vision has been really sort of hit from the side. Uh, To get you out of this, though, because you can't... Yeah, there's, the Eight of Swords is a... It's, not, it's a, not worrying, but it's kind of... It is that moment when you're sort of trapped. You feel just so trapped by what's going on in your head. You're blindfolded and you just can't move. Like, your thoughts have become like this cage. We need to get you out of there. And so I think that this Knight of Wands could be really helpful for you, which is this uh, sort of really direct energy, somebody in your periphery that has uh, access to spirit or an access to creativity or that sort of like, you know, there's different reverberations that we all work on with different people. F look out for someone that is speaking your language. That could be your art language. That could be your spirit language, whatever it is. Look out for that person and, and, and follow their maybe influence in terms of how you're going to get through this these big humps uh, because it did look really positive it did look really promising didn't it there was something that I'm just looking at the colors here too because there's lots of purple and lots of orange and the purple sort of bringing up the the third eye chakra here yeah I think that this is really you're being really urged and even the devil which doesn't always happen but it's got lots of fire there like intense passion uh, I mean, it's very camp, <laughs> but, um, you need to step away from here and whoever's keeping you here, whatever that might be. And you need to, with your third eye, with your pineal gland, with that that the only way that you're going to explore that space is through meditation. I've really come to understand it's, which is such a, you know, it's kind of an unsatisfying thing to hear if you, if you've got a lot on your mind, but it's really going to, to help you because I think what you're being, you're being encouraged here, you know, you're being told to hold your vision and you've been through hell and high water so far. And all you really wanted was, you know, connection. You just want that, opportunity to you know come together or to allow folks to come together or something similar something with that sort of vibe sorry I'm gesticulating so much no, yeah nothing's over yet it doesn't seem that anything's over yet and actually like your oracles are really positive so there is I think you really need to get back you need to get the posse back you need to gather your 
sparrows, have them come around you and move on together from there because the devil is... There is the worry of falling back into old habits or falling back into... That could be the way that you're thinking about yourself with all of these heavy swords up top. It could be dumb habits. It could be, you know, drinking too much or, you know, whatever it is in all those things that we do to ourselves because we're sort of like, oh, I'm just trying to ease the tension of what's going on here in the brain. Master what's going on there in the brain and really look for the potential of what can go on in the brain. Uh, The third eye is not something that the new age community invented there's ancient wisdom attached to all of these different uh philosophies and it's kind of that sounds you know all well and good for me to say sort of bower birding from here there and everywhere but i think that that's one thing that's really going to get us through the next bit of time is to step away from dogma so much step away from and that that can come from you know well-meaning folks that are kind of love and light or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> uh, hold your vision. You've got it. You need to... You can't do this alone, though. You can't get out of this late sword stage. Uh, you need to get away from this princess of swords energy, this person that just slaps you with the truth time and again. Or, you know, they mean well, but it's just time and again that they just... You, you know, and in a really clunky way. Like, and it's not sort of... If this was the Queen of Swords, it'd be a different story because it'd be like, whoa, mother's in town. You know, you're being read the right act. You can't get away with this. It's not, though. It's the Princess of Swords, and she can be a bitch. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm really going to get in trouble for this one. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to wrap this one up. But I think that you yet yeah, really need to keep the faith and look for ulterior or exterior forces that can help you through this. Maybe duck and weave through some of that mental uh, challenge and see what the body's telling you, see what your heart's telling you, see what your dreams are telling you, all of those different ways that can, you can kind of look at a situation and uh, take stock and potentially reconfigure it for the better. Uh, All the very best with this pile three. It seems like, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, you seem very busy. So I'll let you go. Uh, If you wanted to read your horoscope, I've put up some fresh ones on my website, umaruby.com. So it's all, they're all listed there uh, to, and they're all incorporated with the current planetary transits that are happening above us. And also I asked Tarot to qualify some of those impulses, but it's, yeah, it's, I'm kind of proud of the way that I write them. They kind of, have seemed to have worked quite well so far uh and yeah if you need extra guidance have a look there maybe that there might be some more specific uh transits that are happening in your chart at the moment that are sort of triggering off these points for you and there could be some solutions in there as to how to get through and how to how to move on from that bitch princess jump on the back of the horse with the knight of wands <laughs> Uh, That's all I've got for you, Pile 3. Lots of love, full moon blessings. And remember that this is the last one that we've got before eclipse season. So we've got very little power the month coming. So let go of what you can now. Let it out, let it go, let it flow. Uh, All the very best. Love you. And I'll see you later. Bye. Hello, Pile 4. If you picked the Murder of Crows tarot and this hoop earring that I stepped on, which I'll show you there, which I still wear them. They're still beautiful, just slightly squashed. Welcome to your reading. Now, as I said before, this full moon that's coming up for us, that's probably happening tonight, if you're watching this on the 16th, when I posted it, It's going to be fairly massive. It's not just lunar energy that we're dealing with. Uh, Pluto is in the mix too. So Pluto is our harbinger of great change, of regeneration, of coming in and turning the tables on what it is that you thought was the truth. So it's big stuff. And coupled with the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, it might, the turbulence 
in life might be feeling quite hard to manage at the moment, but I'm here to tell you that it's okay. It's all happening upstairs. And if you can investigate yourself and how you're feeling, you'll know how to step forward from here. So we are invited to let things go at a full moon. Uh, but do know that there is lots of influence above our heads right now. So in that, we've got obviously the moon, we've got the sun and Pluto. That's the first time I got that right. I kept on with the other or the other groups. I kept on introducing the wrong oracle. Doesn't matter. I'm just looking at that now. Damn it. Will I go back and film them all again? No, I won't. I'm going to shuffle these in front of you. I'm going to pull uh, three oracle cards. We're going to sew them together to get this greater sense of who you are and what you're pondering right now, what you're going through. And then we'll ask Tarot for some greater advice, some greater fleshing out of, of this story and what what might be the beneficial for you. All right, and the moon. Okay, let's do it. Change. Be bold and make the first move. Love. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> Oh, this is lovely. Okay, so if this isn't resonating with you, if you're not looking for love, then you might want to tap out of this pile because this is very, very specific. Now, Cardinal Moon is right there. So that's big Libra energy. The cardinal, cardinal signs are the signs that kick off a season. So in terms of changing from one season to the next, that's what cardinal is. Be bold and make the first move. Harness your cardinal energy and do it. Change is our sacred geometry card here. And this talks about our malleability, how perhaps we were someone before and we're, not long, we're no longer that person and how beautiful and sweet and gorgeous that is. I think that probably if you're going through some changes right now, if you're going through a bit of a kind of rebirth in that way, then make sure that you're in good company. Make sure that you're around people that support that. It can get sticky sometimes when you're in the company of people that need you to be the way that you used to be. Simple as that. Change is good. Change is positive. It's vibrant. You know, look at those colors right there. Like that's an incredible vortex to zoom in on and to go through. Finally, <clears throat> we have the Wild Roses card. Nick Cave and Kalinog talks about love. The Wild Roses unlike the domesticated roses, grow anywhere. And they grow in places that you probably wouldn't expect to find them. I don't know if you've ever come across roses in the wild before, but gosh, they just hold a separate kind of beauty. Their talons and thorns and yeah, they're robust. Uh, this is wild love. Now, as I'm gonna say it again, if you're not looking for love, if you're, if you're happily in relationship with someone or, or yourself, then move on through. But I would suspect that this reading is very specific for those that are looking for the freshness of what new love can bring. That change, I'm going to put the, sorry, just to show you, there's Justice. I'm going to pop her back in to see what comes out. But tarot, oh, I just opened up to the Six of Cups card. <laughs> Soulmates. <laughs> this is nice. Oh, I'm happy to be a cheerleader. This is really beautiful. Now let's 
make it more specific though, because this is all well and good to giggle like schoolgirls. But let's get some practical advice from Tarot. Okay, so we need to make the first move. Change is afoot, and it's all for love. How gorgeous. Let's see what Tarot says. All right, so. Un, dos, tres, cuatro. Let's see. Oh, and there's Justice, the first card. Ace of Cups, Ten of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. Wow, this is massive. All right, so sorry for the urgency, but Justice came out. You're actually the only pilot. Justice re-emerged, uh, which if we think about the major arcana, the major secrets in the tarot, Justice is the Libra card. Uh, it is the card of perfect balance. It is the card of truth and honesty. It's the card of, I was going to say righteousness, but that's probably the wrong sentiment. I don't know so much about righteousness, but it's about what is right. Do what is right. Also, if we're thinking about timelines, you've got the cardinal moon and justice. So sooner rather than later, my dear, because you have the ace of cups which is a brand new beginning, a brand new start in love, a brand new emotional connection. I'm so proud of you. This is really exciting. The Ten of Cups, let's skip to the end. <clears throat> That's interesting. The Ten of Cups is emotional, complete fulfillment. It's what we sort of all hope for and yearn for and look up for, that idea of what the, the initial spark of love and where can it take us. I am going to be critical of this because to go from one to ten like you've skipped the middle so make sure that you savor every single moment of this uh, and the queen of pentacles here at the end this could represent this energy that you're moving towards the queen of pentacles is an incredibly generous earthbound mossy energy it's somebody who has everything that they need and they know how to procure what it is that they need they're very good with the earth and being present for that, they're in no actual need of any of your bounty. They've got their own uh, place covered, uh, but probably in terms of like how they're making you feel, you know, not to bring star signs into it, but uh, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus are our earth signs. So that could mean something. It doesn't have to, uh, but maybe this, this queen is where you're headed. Could be you as well, but I don't, yeah, I think that, I think that just looking at the way that that's going that way, uh, queenie is where we're bound. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save these, save these cards here so we can keep looking at them. But I'll just flip these piles too to see what's on the other side. Five of swords, six of cups. <laughs> Seven of Swords. And the Devil. Oh. Okay. Okay, this changes things. Not... Not greatly. I want to address the Swords energy first. So we've got the Five and the Seven of Swords here. Can you see them? So, one's the card of the bully, unfortunately. The Five of Swords does talk about a battle of the minds. It does talk about a sort of barbed truth-telling back and forth with no winner. We sort of think about that sort of bully energy. And the Seven of Swords is sort of the thief. So it's about sort of like leaving things out. So this card is coming underneath the Ten and that's coming underneath justice. I wouldn't worry so much about this as, because there's so much positive flow through going on here. Let's get a little bit more theosoph theosophical, I think. This ace of cups, it, there's potential for a profound coupling here. You can see 
this crow staring in the mirror, or actually not looking, the, sorry, the crow's looking away, but the mirror, the reflection of the crow is eyeballing straight back. So this coupling, this ace of cups, this new love, is going to be really healing for you in terms of meeting somebody that resonates with you on a very, very deep level, a very pure level. Uh, somebody that you can feel safe with, somebody that you can feel that you have known for a long time, that you've known all your life. Uh, the seven, the, sorry, the six of cups is the card of the inner child too. So have a think about if this person is making you feel or making you remember what it's like to be a kid or having you more in common with that energy. The devil's here. Now, the devil we mustn't be frightened of. The devil is in all of us, and it's not a judgment. It's not the judgment card. The judgment card isn't even a judgment card, but we, I digress. The devil talks about our habitual state. When we get scared or trapped or lost, what do we do to ourselves and to our brain and to our body that is just habit. It's not to serve any greater purpose. It's just to keep you sort of safe or feeling safe for a time. What are the things that are influencing your life? And that could be that, that sometimes it can be substances. It doesn't always have to be. It can be a, it can be a um, mindset, <clears throat> a mind frame. So if you're hard on yourself, girl, stop it because you're great. Uh, and you're fully worth this Queen of Pentacles energy. You're fully worth coming together for this cycle. And I'm going to say this cycle just because it's very important to remember that everything is cyclical and everything has a beginning, a middle and an end, but not in a linear way, in, a, in this way. So not, you know, it's, there's... there's fairy tales really effed us all up just in terms of, and then they all lived happily ever after because then that's the end of the book and then where do you go to from there? You know, like you get married at 16, stop being a mermaid, get married at 16 and then what? It's strange. This is, there's some profound change here for you. There's some big shifts in your perspective and you were somebody and you're not anymore and you're going to hold on to that and be really proud in that space you're going to you're going to come into contact with somebody that is able and willing and can't wait to honor that change and they may have known you before the change they may have known you only after it doesn't really matter who you're presenting as now who the essence of you is coming from a place of truth as far as i can see i think that possibly there may have been some agitation around that uh, and that could be internal that could be from an outside source but these nasty looking sword cards here are often a friction of it's either holding back truth and not someone concealing the truth from you or attacking you with their version of the truth either way there's no winners I mean you can see the crows have flown they're like nah we're out of here Maybe you're one of these crows here. That's nice to think about. I don't want to pepper this with too much of my influence because this is really direct. Make the first move. Be bold. Cardinal Moon. Get it. Get it, get it, get it. Best of luck. This is so lovely. Remember that you are entitled to this happiness. You're entitled to this shift, this change. The devil to me, and because it's the devil is a Capricorn energy too. It's the sort of, that's the major arcana that's associated with Capricorn, which is interesting because Pluto's in Capricorn right now. So think about it in terms of that. Think about it in terms of what's Capricorn in a low vibration? They're self-hating, self-loathing. They're the first to want to bury their own brain in the ground and think they're an idiot and not good enough and not worth it. Uh, resist that because the Queen of Pentacles, which is another Capricorn energy, is earthbound, 
hovering right above that. So as she's guiding you, she's sort of like, no, 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 you don't need to slip into that space. That space isn't for this freshness. This is wild and this is very earthbound. This is something that's growing out of the very soil beneath us and it can't be tamed, it's not domesticated, it's maybe not a coupling that you're used to, perhaps, or definitely this is some fresh energy and you've not felt like this. And it's lovely and really natural. <laughs> really natural, really beautiful. Go to it. Oh, let me know how it goes. Um, I'm so happy for you, and I want to offer you all of my love and blessings for this full moon in Libra, which is just lovely. I mean, you know, Libra classically is about our seventh house, uh, you know, the house of VIPs and coming together. So this is a really positive, beautiful, fresh start for you. This is lovely and well-deserved. And strike while the iron is hot. I'll remind you of that because you're the only group that Libra came out for in the reading and that's right now obviously if you're watching this you know six months from now then i mean right now right now <laughs> i use the full moon the new moon as a way of ceremony uh, but you don't have to watch this these these readings never have a use by date if there's messages and a scenario that's i'm just talking back to you then take it take it and do it and be confident be confident with it. Uh, if you wanted any more guidance, head over to my website. I've got horoscopes for you. I update them every two weeks. Uh, failing that, all the very best. I've got. I've had goosebumps for the whole time I've done this reading. It's so lovely. I'm really proud of you. This is great. This is really positive. And what a great way to start off this new season. And what a great way to ring in eclipse season that's just about to come in where we don't have any power, where we just have to take what the changes are gracefully so yeah good luck with it let me know how you go and i'll see you possibly in two weeks for the taurus new moon but i might not i'm going to think about it i think i might leave eclipse season as it is but we'll see i'll see if i'm st stricken to to make something else um i'm gonna stop talking all the best take care bye